The California Academy of Sciences Steinhardt Aquarium turned 100 this year. Quite a milestone. And as the exhibit celebrates a century in San Francisco, researchers are looking ahead to a new era of discovery and drawing on lessons from the past for the next 100 years. You know, at the time, it was the wild, wild west, I think. Like, no one knew. <laughs> When librarian Rebecca Kim looks back over a century of history at the Steinhardt Aquarium, she sees the kind of evolution even Charles Darwin couldn't have dreamed of, starting with its birth in the Roaring Twenties as an aquatic attraction for crowds visiting the California Academy of Sciences. Within a decade, the Steinhardt's collection would expand and grow far more exotic. In 1934, the Academy goes on an expedition to the Galapagos, and they do transport back fishes. We have these pictures that are amazing. And they keep them alive, and they bring them back on this yacht. And depending on the director, like the kinds of animals that are featured sort of shift. This would have been the only way for people to see these things. So it was like everything was exotic, unique. Many count Earl Harold among the most colorful directors. He helped introduce popular animals, including Butterball, an injured manatee rescued from a fish market. He was really into bringing in all animals um, and especially marine mammals. So he had a soft spot for manatees, dolphins. He really wanted to draw people in by like seeing these animals they would not have seen anywhere else. And over the decades, future directors like John McCosker would pique the public's interest in other creatures like great white sharks and the expanding world of ocean science. And from African penguins to tropical sea life, the aquarium's collection continued to amaze visitors with new discoveries. A century's worth of aquatic discovery, to be exact. But now, as we look forward to the next 100 years, Steinhardt's scientific mission could become even more critical as the world continues to confront the challenges brought on by climate change. Over the past, say, 50 years, zoos and aquariums have really pivoted from, you know, exotic creatures uh, to being conservation organizations. And for us, really the most uh, critical conservation issue, what's paramount, is climate change. Bart Shepard is the senior director at Steinhardt. When he's not overseeing the aquarium, he's often conducting field research. We met him shortly after his return from an expedition documenting plastic pollution along coral reefs in the Indian Ocean. So we've actually done global surveys of plastics, uh, looking at the difference between shallow reefs and what we call the twilight zone reefs, which are coral reefs that are found about you know, 200 to 500 feet deep. And he points to other cutting edge restoration projects as a critical part of Steinhardt's ongoing mission. The Coral Regeneration Lab is one of the few in the country able to spawn living coral to potentially repair damaged reefs. While a separate sea star breeding program could someday help restore threatened species off the Bay Area coastline. Still other research teams are working on restoring damaged kelp forests and more. I think that's one of the strengths of the Academy is we've got this uh, world-class aquarium with really talented, passionate people that are scientists, that study genetics, that study taxonomy and systematics, that study the ecology and the role of the, their target organisms. There's so much to learn still. For librarian Rebecca Kim, it's a history that is still being written as she works to document one century of discovery that's now leading to another. Also to remember the people that were here that helped build this place. I think that's like the fun part of my job. A rich history and a bright future.